What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. It's Sith Council. It's Big Thing Sith Council. It is Wednesday. And it's not that there's a lot of Star Wars news, but the big news is The Mandalorian Season 3. The trailer dropped. We haven't really talked about it yet, so Steph and I will go over that. We'll talk about that. Mike's not here today. Um, but we will talk about The Bad Batch Episode 4. That'll be a spoiler-heavy conversation. So we're excited to do that with you guys. And if you're brand new to the channel and you've never been here before, make sure you subscribe. 70,000, man. We're almost there. It's almost 64. We need your help. So if you're brand new to the channel, you've been here before, you're like, I don't know, I don't subscribe to channels. Make us your first. Show a little. And speaking about showing a little, you can show some class. Get yourself one of those shirts. You can get a Sith Council shirt. Black Knight. You don't know-ish. Any of it. You can do it. Patreon.com slash the big thing show. And we have Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere podcasts are found. You guys listen to us, whether you're at the gym, in the car, we're as much an audio show as we are a video show. So that being said, it is Sith Council. I'm ready. You're ready. So let's do it. I can feel your anger. It gives you focus. Makes you stronger. Welcome back, everybody. It is Sith Council. It's myself and Dar Sabra. Hello. She is here. What's up, Steph? How are the you? Black Knight shirt. You like it? Yeah. You want one? Yeah. Oh, I guess you want. That's um, such a quick turnaround. Oh, yeah, we got it. We got that. We have a few other things. Amazing. Top, top Gun Guy. I think I have a Top Gun Guy shirt for you. Have you not gotten no, one of those? No, oh, I have one of those I for you. I want one. All right, I'll get you one of those. And I'm going to get you the You Don't Know Ish. Yeah. I'm get you the sweatshirt. The That's coming. Goat. That's, That's coming. Um, okay. A lot to talk about. Yeah. And we should just start right away with uh, Mandalorian, man. Yeah. So it dropped on, uh, what was it on? This is that image is from Star Wars News Net. But the Mandalorian season three, the trailer dropped. And there's a lot to talk about. I mean, we have so many different images in general that from the trailer that kind of stood out. I'm going to just kind of go over it with Steph. And first of all, Steph, what were your overall thoughts of the uh, of the trailer? I'm so hyped. Yeah. It's, they're doing such a great job with the trailers for this show. And it was really cool to see everyone freak out on Twitter and, like, the Twitter sphere about it. Yeah, the one that got me huh. was the was the lightsaber scene, obviously. Because, yeah, um, that's new. It's new, and it's like, well, obviously, what is it? Is it... A flashback? It, yeah, I would assume so. It's got to be... I, what I what I had said in my, in my um, breakdown was that it's... It's got to be when they show Grogu getting rescued from the temple. Yeah. And you got the all the lightsabers in general, you know, whatever is happening at that time. Somebody had said something, whether or not, you know, Anakin, everyone's ex assuming that he's going to be in Ahsoka, which I still think he will be, but maybe they shot something where he's going to be in Mandalorian also in this flashback scene. Right. They could have shot something at the same time they were shooting for Obi-Wan. Yeah. They could, I mean, or, or yeah, or that, when, when that, they shot that, that scene with Reva, yeah. yeah, they could have shot that. You know what? We want to also add something in here with Grogu yeah. and then kill two birds with one stone. Why not? It looks really similar. It does. There's a lot of shots, obviously, with with uh, Din flying around the the solar system with, with Grogu, teaching him the ways of, of the Mandalore, Mandalorian, rather. But I think that the the thing that really stood out was this was the shot with the, with the other Mandalorians. Yes. Yeah, you know, like that, like... Who are they? Like, yeah. You know? Yeah, I know. Because you know I'm re-watching Rebels, and I just get so pumped about the lore of Mandalore. Yeah. It, there's so much to explore there, and so I'm like, yeah, are, is it characters we've seen before? Or are they new? Right. Are they ones that showed up in the first season? Remember when all of them pulled up to right. help him? Right, Like, who are they? And that's... See, my thing is, I if it's a mixture of both, that's that's fine. If it's a new character, if it's some characters that he met in that first season, but the only ones that we really learned anything about in the first two seasons and even in Boba Fett were the Armorer and Vizsla. Those are the yeah. only two that we learned about. We learned their names. We learned more about them. We learned, you know, they had more dialogue. The other ones were just kind of in that in that fight on Navarro. We're just we're badasses and we're having a big fight, but we didn't really learn anything about them. I hope that. Why, Bo. Well, that we just learned. Yeah. Well, Bo, yeah, but Bo's. I'm talking about in that in particular that, like sect that, of the ones who the, the really strict man. Yes, the religious ones yeah. with the that keep the helmets on. Like 
will we learn about them? And I think the answer is yes. That's why their their helmets are so uh, distinct. Um, we'll probably learn more about him as he's, I think, because it looks like in that trailer, the Babu Frick aliens are, you know, they're hiding. And then some people say that that's actually on Navarro, that they're liberating it. I don't think it is. I might be wrong. I thought it was that planet in um, in uh, Rise of Skywalker that Babu Frick is on oh, yeah. and that Carrie Russell is right. on. And I feel like like they come in to help liberate that because the Trandoshans are, are there, like, causing havoc. And then the Mandalorians come in and, and kind of wreck shop. Yeah. So no, I, like- yeah, I think that that is a good call. I couldn't tell where they were. When it comes to the planets, I'm like, I don't know. Is yeah. this something we've seen before or something new? Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, it's it, it seems like it could, uh, well, and then they're flying away and the fireworks are going yeah. off in the back. I think that's after they've liberated them. Yeah. That's what it yeah. seems like anyway. Yeah. So that whole thing, that whole setup of the mission that it's got to happen, and then there's that amazing scene when that whatever that creature is is in the cave, and then Grogu's like, yeah, I've been training with Luke Skywalker dipped so and, and, and throws them throws them you know tosses them backwards and i'm glad that they did that they also show you that grogu hasn't forgotten what he's learned he's going to take it with him he's going to be a mandalorian that uses force yeah because at this point he's 52 51 something like that yeah yeah, yeah right right so <laughs> he has some years on him <laughs> he, he, well i mean it's He's yes still and a no. baby, he's still but a baby, yeah, but yeah, but us, like, you know? yeah, yeah. But he's, yeah, but he's also, but he's been, he's been training, and he trained. And you looked at what he did in Boba Fett. The big question that a lot of people and I've had this conversation on other shows on John Show yesterday, and, I had, or, and then um, the question is because you and I, obviously, for not only for our job, but we're hardcore Star Wars fans, we watch everything, right? So we knew that what happened in Boba Fett. So we know that Grogu's back. Yeah, there are people who just watch The Mandalorian, and. What they're going to do is they're going to tune in and they're going to go, why the hell is Grogu with this guy? He Last I saw him, he was with Luke Skywalker. Yeah, they'll have to. Recap. Do you think, yeah. they have to. Because they did that for Obi-Wan, right? They ended up putting a recap of the prequels. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah right. They did. And it was, and they didn't, right, because they didn't show us so that at celebration, celebration, but they started it. They st- yeah, when, you, when they debuted it, it was great. It was a great yeah. recap. Yeah. So they'll probably do, that's what I was thinking, that they'll probably do a recap before like a five minute recap before yeah. the season i hope so there was so much grogu like i think it's so important to his character to know that he made the choice yeah you have to show that and I, I mean i think that it's too, it's just too confusing like if it's if you're a hardcore fan of the show and then you tune in and he's just there you're like what the hell happened yeah in between so i think they'll show that i think they, they have to show that but um the other stuff that they didn't show there was no bo katan in that yeah. trailer yeah i didn't like that no, yeah, of course I not. I didn't like that. Um, the I only w- reason it's okay is because, like, what you were saying after the second trailer that was released where she was, like, it was basically, like, you're not the only Mandalorian. Yeah, we know she's got a bigger part, but it's just, like, you know, because they, they stayed away from the full story of it. Maybe that's on, I would assume that's on purpose, but I was like, ah, she's not in it. I know. Um, so, and the other thing that I can say, I'm working on trying to get Katie into the studio um hopefully if not next week the following or at least yeah. or at least before mandalorian comes out my goal is that i want to get her to come in before and then i want to have her come in after it airs because yeah she can't talk spoilers yet so we'll try i don't even want to try to get anything out of her but i want to talk to her about like just filming it and in general and and all that stuff kind of leading into it and what to expect from the season whatever she can say and then once it's all done, then we do like a full spoiler episode. With That'd her. be amazing. Yeah. Cause I'm curious, like I know that in the beginning of the, when they were planning the first season or two, they didn't know how integrated Grogu would be. Right. So I'm like, how did they know about how integrated the other Mandalorians would be like Bo's character or is it like audience response? Like, yeah, I it's a good, call. it's a good that. call. Yeah. Because it's like how, how much, you know, as far as involvement, and that's why I want the show to air so I can see how much, you know, she's, is she in it one episode? Yeah. Is she in it three episodes? Is she in it eight episodes? Like how many episodes and in general, what does it show for the arc of her character? So um, we're working on that. We should be, I mean, literally going back and forth with her um, this morning. So we should hopefully get her in soon. Um, and then, yes. Yeah, Was so there th- Carl Grievous in this one? Which, what's that? A- um, uh, grief, grief, Carga. grief, grief, Carga. <laughs> Carl Grievous. That was Carl Grievous is a great. That's, oh that's a Grievous is like brother Arch who never nemesis. made it. No, that's... it's just his brother that never made it. He was like, yeah. he's like, he's like, he was like a, 
He was like a short order cook at uh, at, at Dexter's <laughs> Grill. Hey, you seen Carl Grievous lately? Oh, that guy owes me man. 50 bucks. The B plot that didn't come to screen. It owes me 50 bucks at Carl Grievous. <laughs> um, Grief Carga, yeah, Grief he's, Carga. he's in it. And they do that. He says, there's that whole moment from like Predator where they, he sees him and they do like the, the yeah. shake. He's clean because we saw that. I think, I don't remember if they showed like a full yeah. scene or whatever it was, but they show like it's all clean now. Uh, Navarro and and there's there's that statue of IG eleven yeah in the RG eighty eight right IG eighty eight yeah 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 what, yeah so um so I always forget which which one's one from Empire it's the other one IG eighty eight's from Empire IG, IG, IG eleven is, is, is the, the type of one yeah yeah yeah, yeah. IG eleven nurse so yes. so in the you see hit kind of his foot on uh, in the background of that shot but I remember I think that they showed because they showed a because the, the the trailer that they showed, that they released anyway, was not the same trailer to the extent at Celebration and D23. I think there was a little bit more meat to it at those things. I think that for the most part, it was all there, the one that they released. But I think there was a l couple more things, I think. Am I wrong? Yeah, I thought I was thinking that. That's why I'm in my mind right now a little confused about mm -hmm. what was in which one. But there was, I think there was an extended one. But I'm kind of glad. I don't think you need to show everything. No, I'm okay. glad. I'm glad. I mean, look, this that's what the intent of this trailer was, right? It was just to get people excited. And I actually think it was more so to get the casual fan excited more so than anything else. About Grogu, I think, too. Like, Gro he's back. Absolutely. But I think. Um, just to like show that the show is yeah coming. because yeah. Uh, I think it was a great yeah because I was on I was on campus show yesterday and we talked about this on um, uh, the the football play that they've been doing for trailers right like whether it's Ant Man or this people are like oh what what you right away what you think of is you're gonna get people who don't normally watch football uh, that to watch the trailer because they really want to see it and that's definitely part of the case but the bigger reason that you do it is because you have the fans who are already watching it who are the casual fans who don't know that it's coming out going oh mandalorian's coming back mm. or i've never seen the show and i've heard about it oh that's that baby yoda thing they always talk about like my dad watching football going oh right that star wars show. My, my buddy who's a big star wars fan but doesn't keep up with the news oh mandalorian's coming back those that because it's 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 that's the way people the casual fans find these things right yeah, because I do, there's probably a lot of football fans that are like, oh, there's probably nothing on Disney Plus for me, forgetting that Star Wars is there. Right. And I do think that there is an intersection between sports fans and people who would like The Mandalorian and a lot 100%, of Star Wars. 100%, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, man, Mandalorian is coming back. I'm so March excited. First. It's going to be great. It's, and it's eight weeks, so you get, you'll get March and April. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it's supposed to be. I mean, it's eight episodes. So whether or not they take a break or not, they normally don't. But oh, but yeah. I'm I'm pretty excited for the show. I think that this will be a pretty good year for Star Wars in general. And I think the more that we have discussed this, um, you know, they have this potential crossover event with Skeleton Crew, Ahsoka. I am starting to think more and more that this is more fact than fiction because the fact that they all come out in the same year, the fact that it's the, the rumors are pretty heavy that they're going to, I think they'll set something up. And they're not up. doing movies right now. They're not doing movies for a while. And this is kind of like their big event. I, th I think this. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I think so. I think it's. Like when you first said it, I was like, that's a good fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, right. I know. But really that would be such smart business for them to be a look. MCU's got the movie integration on lock. Right. Why don't we start with shows? Yeah, and and do and but because oh, I mean, I remember when Mike said this a long time ago. It's like, well, of course, everything in Star Wars is like a shared universe. Yes, in, it, by by you know terminology, sure. But when it comes to actually setting up events that. Putting, on the same timeline. Yeah, putting Ahsoka in Mandalorian because you know she's going to show up in her own series and setting things up kind of briefly and whether or not you show Sabine come in and then bring her in because that's a that's another question is whether or not Sabine's going to show up and, and going to Mandalore could open up a lot because some of the I best... I think she will. Yeah, because you were saying some of the best Rebels and Clone Wars stuff was on Mandalore. Yes. And Filoni loves it. Favreau loves it. They know it really well, so I'm excited for it, and that comes out on March 1st. Um, all right, before we move on, I want to tell you guys what I'm very excited about is Manscaped's back. 
Roxy was in here before Steph, and she was com- she was she was she gave me a compliment. She liked my beard. I I almost said it. Oh, because I'm be- I'm finally growing one out, and you know, and one of the main reasons is because of Manscaped. <laughs> uh, it's true because I wanted to. I wanted to, they have this new product that I'm excited about, and it is it is pretty amazing. It's it they have beard products now. That's that's what they've been doing. Just it, it, we know that you're good for your balls. But they are, once again, they're revolutionizing men's grooming with the brand new Beard Hedger Pro Kit. From a beard trim to a fresh shave, the technology behind the Beard Hedger Pro Kit allows you to shape your signature beard look. You can finally use Manscaped products to make your drapes match your carpet by going to manscaped.com. you got to use that code big thing to get 20% off. Tame your mane. No one likes a weird beard. Say goodbye to all your stubble trouble with Manscaped Pro Beard Kit. That's why I'm telling you, man. I've been trying to keep up on it. Never could do it when I was a, when I was a, a younger Ute, younger Ute, the two Utes, but um, but now I'm able to do it, and I'm also able to do it because I can keep up by using uh, Manscaped's product. It's great. It's waterproof. You can shave in the shower and avoid all that hair in the sink. That's awesome. The blade is tough on hair, but smooth on your face, leading to a single stroke efficiency, and that it brings satisfaction. Just one stroke at a time. It's nice. Cap off the kit, you can use that beard balm. It's a pomade that shapes, styles, moisturizes, and tames for a sculpted look to attract any fellows or dames. Steph, are you a, are you a beard girl? I love beards. You do? Okay. Yes. Look at that. Yes. So you're going to get 20% off and free shipping with the code BIGTHING at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping, manscaped.com, and use Big Thing. Manscaped. Beard Hedger. One stroke. One guard. 20 lengths. You see... That's what I'm saying, and you and you would rather ha- you'd rather see somebody with a trim beard than a messy. Yucky. Oh, total a clean yeah. cut beard. Yeah, Ooh, I'm I'm being so serious right now. Uh, really? It is, yeah, I truly that is one of my favorite things. See, and that was it's because I was always I was always stubble guy. I was always stubble guy, and for a while I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna give it a shot. Yeah. And Manscaped was like, well, we can help you. Well, there you go. That's a friend. That's a friend. So get yourself use that code. Big thing, and, and again, I, I I know compared to like Brett, this is this is a disaster compared to Brett. It's coming in nice. Thank you. I'm trying. Um, all right, let's get more into it. Let's get to Bad Batch. We should do that. Okay. Steph and I have talked about Bad Batch in the same exact way, and <laughs> it is, it's like this is this is the thing with this show. There's some episodes that are like the mission of the week. And then there's one that kind of connects the whole story and, and, and plays things together. And this is an episode mission of the week. Um, the crew, we go to, you see, this is the episode I was telling you about with like the kind of, they just basically took the Phantom Menace. Yes. Pod racing. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Fully. It's just, it's fun. It's fun. I love tech. Actually, he might be my favorite character. Yeah, Tech's great. Uh, and I'm glad that he kind of had like his own little episode, mm-hmm. but it's like, did this do anything for the plot? So I have now seen, I think that there's a total of 16 episodes. What I realized is they only sent 14. Oh. So at least to me. Um, I've watched all 14, so I'm not going to spoil anything for anybody. We're just talking about spoilers on this one. But overall, do I think it has anything to do with the plot? Yeah, kind of, but not really. I mean, it's like just their relationship with Sid. Yeah, like that's that's the main that's the main thing that I can say is you know that's what they establish here is that they try to they try to bail her out because yeah she's in trouble and how do you feel about Sid as a character? She's, ro- she's rotten, like she's kind of selfish. A season and a half in, and it's just like I can't believe she's like a main character, right? Not that she, there's nothing she does that I don't like. It's just like what she really is just a plot device. She is. And I think that the, the new character, um, and oh, the like gangster guy. No, 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 no. She, she, he, he's not, not the gangster guy who is the, the great, uh, Ernie Hudson, but no, not, not, not him. Oh, that's who voiced him. I was like, this sounds familiar. Yeah, no, not, not him. Um, did they introduce yet the character? I think it's in the first couple episodes. That Wanda Sykes. Yeah, yeah, did, yeah. Did, did. yeah. She, she, she is a bigger character. That's cool. I she's, love Wanda. Yeah. So, and I think that she gets involved a little bit more. But this one, yeah, you know, they do. They, they go on. To, they do some races, and and it's like it's it's predictable. The robot is is the top racer, and the second that tech starts showing an interest at all, you're like, oh, okay, well, something's gonna happen to the robot, the the droid 
and uh, and and here's and here's tech, and he's gonna have to race, and he's gonna win. And the droid was funny. He was, but like everything that happened, you knew it was right. Gonna happen. And it was it was essentially the the Anakin plot, where it's like, okay, you got to race the Bulba, and if you do, you win the bet. Yeah. And, that's exactly. I mean, it's yeah. exactly what happened. So this is a recycled story, right? I yeah. feel like there was even the same character. That, what's his name? Ryan does the best impression of Sebulba. Oh yeah, yeah, Sebulba. Yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, it was. So I mean, there's really not too much to talk about with this episode. It's the same. Even Omega was like barely did anything. Yeah, it, it's it's true. It was like it. They, it was just Wrecker, her, and and Tech, and it was it's. It was text time to shine. Um, does able to do it, showing the the human a- aspect of of the clones as much as anything else. And um, yeah, I guess yeah. in that sense, that's a good point. Yeah, but it shows that a droid army can only take you so far. It's that, and I think that's one of the big things of the entire season. Yeah. it's it's the idea that how they stand alone from different clones that they can make these decisions to not just benefit them. You know, they, they, they don't have to just follow orders. They can make decisions to try to help somebody. Yeah. Um, and I think Omega has been showing them that as well. Um, and then, but yeah, it's just like, it's one of those, that's, that's what I mean with this show is that you get to a place with this show that there, there are a few episodes that are coming up that I'll tell you that I can't wait to talk to Steph and Mike about, because it's like, if this was the show every week, I would be like, oh, man. And they do that throughout the entire season. And then there's these episodes like this where it's like, okay, this is, as Steph said, this is a fun kind of little appetizer as we get ready for Mandalorian. Right. Yeah. Like, it was nice to fall asleep, too. Yeah. And that's really all That's really all it is. I don't really have a lot to say about Neither this do episode. I. That's the really problem. Like, yeah. That's like, I can't, t- I, I saw, I mean, God bless some people. I see people doing like full spoiler, like 45 minute episodes on. And I was like, I don't know how you can talk about really? it. Yeah, good. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm in awe of it. In, in no, a yeah, no way. shade. That's just no, like, at I all. was thinking like, what are my thoughts? I just don't know how to talk about the, the show in depth for 45 minutes without, uh, cause it's like, you know, there are people who absolutely love this show and I, and I'm so glad I just, Hell yeah, it, yeah. there are a few, but there are a few episodes I will say that I, that I geek out, that I geeked out about, and I'm excited to talk to everybody about. But this we wasn't liked, one of them. I loved Loft's episode. Yeah, it was. Yeah, the, the, and you get a few more of those types of episodes. And nothing's offensive, so that's good. It's fun. Yeah. So look, what did you guys think? Did you like the episode? Go ahead and give us a, your thoughts. I really want to hear what you're thinking of Bad Batch thus far. Do you dig it? Do you not dig it? Are you feeling like Steph and I? Do you think, shut up, you two idiots. We're, 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 I love this show. This show. I look forward to this show every week the same way I do Mandalorian and Andor and, and Obi-Wan and Boba Fett. So don't yuck on my yum, turds. And, and I understand it. I get it. But what we are going to do is we got some questions, man. we got a lot of questions coming in from you. i got questions. All right, so give me one. This is from, I put this on the community page, I put this on my Facebook page, and then I ask, and you guys submit, and here you go. Here's the first one. This is from Ronan Unchained. Hello, Sith Council. Do you think that Din's journey over the next season and possible storyline leading up to Thrawn will mirror Braveheart? I know John and Dave have used samurai and westerns as inspirations for the show, but I think if Din had it his way, he'd... He'd redeem himself, unite all Mandalorians, and settle back down with the widow and her daughter from season one. Cheers. Um, that's a tough one because I think that the difference with like Braveheart, you've seen Braveheart. Yeah. Okay. So Braveheart Wallace. Yeah, William Wallace. So William Wallace wanted nice he wanted to stay out of the fight, man. Yeah. He wanted to stay out of the fight. He was he, William Wallace started off, um, his dad was part of the rebellion. His uncle took him, he learned the way of the land, became educated, all this stuff too, and just came back to his homeland and just wanted to stay out of the fight. He fell in love, and he was not going to be part of the battle. Mm-hmm. It was the death of his wife that set him into the battle. It's not the case with Din. Din's already been in the battle. Din's been part of war. He just happened to meet a lovely lady during during yeah. that time, and, he, and we haven't even seen her. I do think she's going to come back into play. I just don't know if it's right away, and I think that his... His focus doesn't seem to be anywhere near her. He doesn't mention it. It's not even Grogu and and redeeming himself in the Mandalore um, lore and the Mandalorian culture seems to be more important to him, yeah. at least in these trailers. Yeah, I, I just don't see that happening this season. I think we're focusing on Mandalorians, yeah. really, and him being a father now, like, full on. 
But that would be great. Like, we love that character. Yeah. I loved that episode. That was directed by Bryce Dallas Howard, right? If yes, I remember. it was. Yeah, that episode was sick. I just, I think they put that in to see what the fans would think. Yeah. And then maybe we'll get her. But I, I don't think that's. If Din winds up living throughout the entire series and survives the entire series, I think it ends with him settling down with her. Pedro Pascal's face is shown at the end he, he and and all of that stuff because there's got to be some kind of battle with the law of the mandalorians that want to keep the mask on and then the bo katan crew that takes it off yeah it's totally something i think about all the time i love his character so much i think that there's a way to pull off him becoming like staying as religious as he is but i just don't feel like that's who he is anymore right. and so i like the idea of him questioning that and then not being that anymore he's like forming his own form of mandalorian yeah i mean i think that and that's that's the thing though is if he if he's the one that winds up taking over because he's got the dark saber so if he's the one that winds up taking over and becoming the leader of of mandalore over bo katan um and even if she becomes the leader of it the rule can be whatever the hell they want it to be. And if he decides, and so, you know, someone had asked recently if we thought we were going to see the armorer's face and I was kind of like a staunt, no, it's not going to happen. Who knows? Maybe if, if the, the rule is set that all those Mandalorians don't have to follow that rule anymore, then maybe you do see her face. I don't know. She's so strict. Yeah, I know. I know. I, I couldn't see it happening. Yeah. But I see her dying before she does that. I know, but I'm just saying if the rules were kind of set down after, I don't know. Yeah, it's, maybe. I mean, the actress is a baddie. Yeah, <laughs> so someone they asked might. you yesterday on John Show, and I was gonna. I want, I'm glad I remembered because I wanted to ask you. I said again, a staunt no on this, but do you think that Satine is the armorer? Oh wow! I don't think so. I don't either. But that would be that would be crazy. What but do you I don't mean. Think it would be mean to Obi Wan, like she she was back and she didn't she didn't. Yeah, tell I don't him. think so. I think Satine really went out. Yeah, and then she decided, and then she decided that she was gonna not show her face ever again after she wasn't. She was like more of a politician. Doesn't didn't make a lot of sense. To no, that would be so savage to yeah. Obi Wan. So mean. Like you, yeah, you were, you were alive and you never told the guy. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, I don't think so, but that would be crazy. It'd be crazy, but I also think that it'd be it'd also be tougher that you have to explain the whole thing. And I think the armor yeah. is a new character. I hope so. I, I actually. Would prefer it. Um, okay, let's get back to. So, and we know what the actress looks like. I feel like they would have yeah. cast someone that had like that, like blonde, blonde hair that Satine had. Totally. Eric Slaby, what are your thoughts on Gabriel Luna's Star Wars comments? He seems like a massive Star Wars fan. If um, if he's in this deep into High Republic content, so Gabriel Luna, if you're watching, are you watching um, Last of Us? Yeah, Gabriel Luna is the brother in, La in The Last of Us, and he um, he was also in Terminator. And um, so I would, uh, I think the comments, he's just a massive Star Wars fan, would love to be in it. Hey, man, if you can find a role for any, like a really talented actor like, like Gabriel Luna or anybody too, especially someone who's a massive fan, that'd be great. And so I think that we're in such a different place now with the way social media works that it's like stuff like this, it's different like you and I tweet out and go, hey, I'd like to be in Star Wars. Chances of it happening, none. Something none. Um, an actor doing it, that like look at what happened with Rosario Dawson. Rosario Dawson was was like fan casting. I think like I, it might have even been Ash Crossan who like asked her about it. And then that clip went viral and then Filoni saw it and said, Rosario would be great. And the next thing you know, she's Ahsoka Tom. Right. So this is something that I that a lot of actors do these days. Um and if this is some, if, if Gabriel Luna is a massive Star Wars fan and wants to be in it and they have a potential to put him in the High Republic stuff because he's reading the books, hey, it'd be amazing. That'd be great. I love that. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's a good way to use your resources. Yeah, like, why if not? If you like it, why not? It's a good way it's to work. It's not hurting yeah. anyone. And the other reason why it's going to be even more um, possible is because The Last of Us is like already a mega hit after episode yeah, one. Yeah, it's, it's like... Everyone's obsessed. After one episode. One episode. It, and besides House of the Dragon, it is the highest rated HBO show in the last 10 years. Yeah. So, I oh, mean, with last 10. Last yeah. 10. Uh, not and it's in, probably going to get bigger because it, like, uh, the House of the Dragon, even though it had a massive, massive audience, there's also a massive audience that's like, this is too much for me. 
where I feel like Last of Us is kind of like not. At, it's intense, but it's it, not it incestual. Is. It, it, it'll it could go it could go up, but I th- House of the Dragon just the show just got so much better and better. And they have that freaking I, dragons. They're not going to touch House of the Dragon numbers. You don't think? No, nah, not numbers. Not numbers. Those, those numbers were were nuts. But but it's going to be it's going to be one of the biggest shows like again in the last ten years. I mean, it's uh, but my point of all that was that that will further his clout and opportunity that if. Yeah, you know, as he gets as the show goes and on, he knows Pedro. No. Yeah, exactly. And if the show goes on, and he says, "Hey, um, do me a favor, agent, manager, lawyer, call Lucasfilm and tell him I'd like to have a meeting. Like they'll take meetings. You know, with, it's, it's, that's how it worked. I mean, shoot, when I was over, that's that's how I met Katie Sackhoff. Was mm-hmm. uh, was uh, was at Silver Pictures. Was um, we were we were taking meetings with they were like oh you know Katie she's in um, she's in um, Battlestar Galactica and we have a whole bunch of projects over at Silver and you know we'd love to take like a general meeting just to have a conference great you know the show's great we'd love to sit down and talk to her. and that's that's just how it happens like and it, sure it hasn't changed that much and since since then so if somebody wants to come in and go hey this guy, he plays Tommy on Last of Us. He wants to be in Star Wars. He wants to be in Lucasfilm. He wants to be involved, take a meeting. Yeah, sure, let's take a meeting. And then they find something for him, and, and the rest is history. So I bet he, so he's going to get something. I think so, too. The stars are too aligned for him yeah. right now. Especially if you're that, if you're that excited about it, and you're, and, you're yeah. on, and you're on one of the biggest shows on TV, and you know Pedro Pascal. And you know Pedro, right, like, right, who right, basically right. runs Star Wars now. <laughs> I don't know about that. Like, ev- <laughs> like, I feel like Pedro's, like, the daddy of he, Star Wars. He is, but he's, like, he's also, he's got the cush job, man. He doesn't. The best, the he, best. Because for Last of Us, it's him. He's on every single thing. There's three people playing Mandalorian. Yeah. And so, and it's his voice. Yeah, majority of the time you see the Mandalorian, it's not Pedro. I know, but he's got the fan pull. That's a one hundred percent. Like yeah. just swag and that voice. Yeah, and he's got that voice. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, thank you again, Eric. I appreciate that. All right, Brent Crabe, love all your shows. Thank you very much. And I love the new Mando trailer. Looks like Grogu got upgraded to a Beskar chair. What do you guys think? Also, you brought me back to Campy being on the shows on Tuesday. Thanks for all you do. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, let let John know that. Tell him. Tell him okay. the reason you started watching his shows. Because, and put in a super chat and tell him that. That's 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 what you got to do. Put in a super chat and tell him that you started watching the show again because of me. See, that's what it's about. Yes. Just kidding. Um, no, um, the best car chair for for Grogu. Um, that's it's great. I think that. The whole the whole thing that he's going to have to be trained as the man as a Mandalorian is is another fun thing inside of it. And he's getting his own stuff, and it's it's no longer a burden for Din. This is like his son, so it's yeah. a very different relationship now. Fully, like everyone recognizes him as his son. Yeah. He does now. Grogu recognizes him as his dad. Like even though he'll outlive him. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. That's sad. Yeah. I love Grogu. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. When they're riding together, I'm like, wow. Yeah. It really turns on the maternal instinct, yeah. I'll tell you that. Yeah, I guess I guess most I mean, if you're most most children are supposed to outlive their parents anyway, but he's gonna by by that like, by by that he's fifty years old. Yeah. He's already and, and I don't even think Din's is fifty years old. No. So that's kinda what I'm hundreds of years. Yeah. Um all right, let's let's move on to the to the next one. But yeah, I think that's I think it's great. I think it's absolutely great that he's got he's got upgrades and and all that. Uh, Hunter Winghar, 11586. Do you think having Mando and Grogu be re- reunited within Book of Boba Fett was a mistake? I've had many casual Star Wars fans ask why Grogu and Mando are back together after being taken by Luke. Do you think it will be explained with season three or will they move forward assuming the audience has seen Book of Boba Fett? Yes, yeah, so we talked, we touched on it briefly, but I think it's a major, major concern. It's, I think you have to do a recap. Like, you have to. You can like I think if they assume that everyone has watched Boba Fett, massive, massive mistake. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think that I think a lot of people had watched Boba Fett, but some people might have not even finished Boba Fett. Right. Even if they did watch it. And so even I just think that they it's not hard to do a recap. They just have to do yeah. it. You just gotta see it. It's like because people are gonna it's like he just said, there's going to be tons of people going. Wait, what the hell? In the last episode was that whole big re- that big finale. Luke took him. Away. How, what the hell happened? Yeah. And then they can go. What it will do is, I bet you what I would love to see the numbers on it, because I bet you it sh- it there's an increase in that episode, the viewers of that Boba Fett episode 
when he when he leaves. I bet you the last few episodes go skyrocket yeah. after this to, to watch it again. And not even for people who haven't seen it. Like, I'm going to go back and watch it again. Yeah. Because I want to I want to see all that and how that played out. And that's still the best stuff in that whole series. Um, so, yeah, I think it is going to confuse people. Do I think it was an overall mistake? I do understand. I, mean, I, I don't love that they put him back together already. I, I mm. it, just because it's like I know everyone loves Grogu. I get it. I understand. I just wanted to see what they would do to be able to let let him like he doesn't now. Now you have to have him in the for the remainder of the series. Like always, you Good. have to. Yeah, I know. But that's and but but that's why they did it. Yeah, because of of that type of reaction. Uh, yeah, and, I'm like. The Mandalorian is not the Mandalorian without Grogu. Yeah, see, and to then, me. yeah, and and the funny thing is when you start that show in the in the first episode, there I mean, Grogu doesn't show up until the very end with a little with a little finger, right? But that's but, all it takes. I know it's true, but that's but, all it takes. But the show, but you you were engaged in that show for sure. The, beforehand, the, the I just rewatched the first episode. I'm rewatching the season one and season yeah. two, and it's an excellent premiere. It's great, and I think that that's the whole thing, though, is that it hooked. He hooked Grogu hooked so many people, and they were worried Disney anyway of like, wow, we're gonna start this and we're not gonna have Grogu. We need some numbers here, and I think that that's why they put him back together in Boba Fett when they could have led to it because it seemed like they were gonna have Din on his own adventures, and then they probably in a writing meeting goes, hey, do we do we have to have Grogu and him get uh, like away from each other? Could we fit Grogu into this story? Yeah, we could, but you know what we'd have to do is we'd have to use Boba Fett to show how they got together because if we spend two episodes of it in Mandalorian Season 3, then we only got six to tell the story we want to tell. Yeah. And it's like, that's probably what happened. And then I would assume that they would they go, all right, let's just put it in there, and then we'll show a recap on Season 3, and everybody would be fine because everybody will be fine. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the next question. Here we go. Thank you again for that. I appreciate it. Um, let's go to Jay Yond eight three four five. Do you think the Order sixty six flashbacks, which were previously caused by Luke looking into Grogu's mind, means we'll get more Luke in season three? So this is a good question. Will Luke pop up? And I and and you know I could probably even I could probably even lead the uh, the episode title and stuff with with this is Will Luke Skywalker show up? In Mandalorian season three, um, at the end of season two, he rescues Grogu, takes him, just going to train him in the in the ways of the Jedi, and then we find out in Book of Boba Fett the choice that Grogu makes and he decides to leave. So, will Luke show back up? Show back up in this series? My answer is no. I don't think he is. I think he's going to show up in Ahsoka. I think it's going to be more of the crossover with um, with the Thrawn potential crossover event i think that's why they set up that whole thing will i see you again i think the story of luke and grogu for now is over steph i think? agree i think we got that insane finale with luke in the mandalorian yeah. and i think that's all you need in the mandalorian yeah i don't think you need him to show back up in the mandalorian yeah. i think that that's you know if you want to rely on grogu that's understandable because he's part of the character he's the character. Yeah. i don't think you need to rely on luke i think luke showing up in in Ahsoka would make sense, and it would also help if you know with that whole setup scene from Bo Book of Boba Fett. Right, right. I just don't think you need him, and I think that he's people that well as far as like getting those memories back for Order sixty six. Grogu is getting strong enough that he can do it himself. Yeah, and can and can start to learn his own past. You don't you don't need a Jedi to do it. You could introduce a new one. Who yeah, knows? but I don't think you need it. I know, and I'm like, uh, can he not? Maybe he could con communicate with him using the Force, but I don't know if he can. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. It'd be interesting. All right. Let's do a few more. Um, going to be a shorter show today. Sorry, guys. Just uh, got to do a few things afterwards. Austin H., do you think if The Last of Us succeeds and The Acolyte succeeds that we are just another step closer to Lucasfilm making a Night Sealer Republic mm -hmm. adaptation with The Last of Us model or maybe even showrunners? I say this. Not as one of these people are just like, you gotta go. I say it just because of the way that Kathleen Kennedy has run the company. I think that as long as Kathleen Kennedy is running Lucasfilm, 
for better or for worse, for whatever you whatever you decide. I don't think a Knights of the Republic thing happens with her at the helm. I don't think it happens as a series. I don't think it happens as a movie. I think she focuses on other things. I don't know how long she's going to be there. But I think as long as Kathleen Kennedy is there, I think a Knights of the Republic thing is not going to happen. I hope I'm wrong. But I just think at, when she's there, I don't I don't think it's it's anywhere close to happening. I think that's a great question. I think that The Last of Us gives a lot of people hope, like video game yeah. people hope that they they can finally find a way to accomplish these games in a visual way that works. So I think it does move it up a little bit higher in the totem pole of possibilities, but I I think it would be a long time. And that's what worries me is because the thing, like using the example of Last of Us, and I used this example on, on a, a short that I did on an episode that I did on Last of Us, what people, and, and the first thing I will say is, I, I said, this is the first real adaptation of a video game. People are like, no, 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 Arcane, no, 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 Castlevania, no, 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 Sonic, none of those, all good. They're not live action. No, 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 no. Oh. Uh, Sonic is live action. Oh. And, um, and, but, but even, but even not, not even live action, doesn't matter. Um, Arcane to me is one of the, you watched it. It's one of the best things I've seen in years. Fox. There were characters that were all pulled from League of Legends, but there wasn't a specific story that they were ad adapting. There mm. were things that, that part of it, but not like a full on story that they were adapting. Same thing with Sonic, same thing with, with Castlevania. There right. were kind of original stories inside of it. The, this last of us is a story that was taken from the game that they added stuff to and adapted to. And that's what I want from Knights of the Republic. That's right. what a series could be all the way through. I don't care if I know the story. I want to see the Malik and Revan stuff. I want to see all that stuff. And I want to see it play out the same way it has between those hours of games. Let's, see, let's say it takes you 10 hours to finish that game. That's 10 episodes in season one. And you can do it that way. And I, I just think that they would try to go the, the biggest problem. And I said this, uh, I'm, so many times now, the biggest problem in the past, the reason I believe the video game things have failed is because these companies, production companies, producers have come in and go, oh, well, they've played that before that game. So let's make a new tale on it. Look what they did with Halo. They totally dropped the ball with Halo. They took Master Chief. They took this thing. And then they just made that whole new story. Tell the story that, that we know. Like, and because it's like reading a book. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know. So I just don't see it happening anytime soon, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, all right, this is the last one today. I'm sorry. Um, it just it's got to be a little bit of a shorter show, as I mentioned. Sandy Robinson. Hello, everybody. Love the show as always. When, if ever, do you think we'll see Ezra show up in a TV series or movie? Will we see Thrawn as well? I, I mean, that's a, oh, yeah. I think it's a guarantee, 100%, that we're going to see him in uh, Ahsoka as right. well as Thrawn. Both of them will show up in, in, uh, in Ahsoka. Yes, absolutely. I'm so excited about that. And I think those casting rumors of, of that they the last two – Last two casting rumors are fact. I think it was Lars Mikkelsen, and I can't remember the name of it's a newer actor. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I still would have liked to see. I think Mina Musad. I saw the two of them. As far as look goes, they both look like Ezra, but I think Mina Musad fills it more. I, if I was to guess, you'll never get an answer to this question unless it was like kind of off the record talking to somebody. I'm sure. But if I was to guess why Mina Musad didn't get it, and I don't know, maybe he still could have. But if I was to guess, there was a lot of comparisons when Ezra was first introduced to Aladdin. And then this guy played oh. Aladdin in live action. You're like, well, we don't want to just actually confirm, just confirm that, the... that it's Aladdin. Yeah. And I think that I might sucks. have heard. I know, but I, I mean, it could be wrong. Who knows? All right, everybody. Um, I, like I said, sorry, shorter episode today of Sith council. We're getting so close to Mandalorian spoiler reviews. We're getting so close to having Katie Sackoff in here for a full episode where we're, we, we got a lot of great stuff coming up. So, Thank you for joining us today. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere podcasts are found. Don't forget about that Patreon, man. Patreon.com slash the big thing show. Get yourself one of those shirts you don't know ish. To wear that at the grocery store. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, and the Black Knight, the big thing. And of course, Sith Council, top selling shirt on the store at the moment. All right, for myself and Steph Sabra, it is the Sith Council. Thank you for joining us, everybody. We'll see you on the flip side. Peace. Hi.